here is video two of our five part series where we are talking about how to plan during this strange time where we are home with our families and battling a world pandemic. So I talked in the first video all about how I have adapted the flow planning process, which actually fits really well into what's happening right now because the whole point of it is that it works in multiple different circumstances, though we've, we did have to make some tweaks. So that was all video number one. And now what I'm doing is I'm going through the four areas of flow, area by area, and giving you some things that you might plan for in your days, in your weeks, um, as we move forward in this time that may appear to have some challenges. And I'm starting with our mindset because I really do believe this is the place that we need to start right now. I believe it's the place we need to start always and I feel like right now is teaching us this lesson. So a few other notes, I usually come on, I'm looking you in the eye, I'm making videos. I have a couple of those for you coming up, but right now I did these slideshows for a number of reasons. Number one, just like you, I'm home, my husband's working from home, I have three kids, and finding that space and that quiet and that time was a little bit hard. So I made these slideshows and it was actually really fun to make them. I love colors, I love typography, and I got to, it almost felt like a crafty project to put these show, slideshows together. You'll see there's a lot of color. And so that was my expression to show this and that's why it is like this. All right, so I just wanted to briefly touch on flow, which I will do at the beginning of every video. If you're watching this in sequence, you can skip over this part, but basically, I've created a process called the flow planning process. And I did this a number of years ago when after I wrote the book, Plan Simple Meals, and I did a book tour across the country. And I realized that many people who were coming to my talks knew what they needed to eat, but just weren't able to find the time. And I wanted to really dig in and figure out why. And out of that exploration came the flow planning process and the idea is that as busy women wanting to be healthy wanting to be good parents possibly we need to come up with a system that puts everything in one place um, and that's what the flow planning process became so it is a 90 day situation because I don't believe we're meant to think a year at a time which comes in handy at a time like this that we're thinking in shorter intervals though go back and listen to number one because right now I'm actually thinking in even shorter intervals and and that's why I wanted to do this special session. The other thing I want to say is that usually, based on where you are, what you're up to, you pick what your goals are in each of these categories. And I'm making this five-part series with the assumption um, of what some of our goals might be in these categories as we're in this kind of wild time. So the flow stands for food and I added wellness right now, so food and wellness. And what we're gonna be looking at in one of the videos after this is how to plan for our food when the shelves are empty and we're really trying to stay healthy. In With lifestyle, we're really gonna be looking at maintaining our homes and relationships when we're in close quarters. And our own goal, which is spirituality, self-care, mindset, we're really gonna look at managing our mindset in a stressful time because for many of us, this feels like a very stressful time. And then in the work category, we're gonna talk about working from home and homeschooling in the weeks, maybe months ahead. And all these things are things that I think we're all in a very similar boat right now, so that's why I'm going with this angle. And I do think that it's really interesting right now to, that all these things are coming up and they're giving us these challenges because I think it is an opportunity to really, really grow. Um, and our mind is powerful. And so that's why I'm starting here. Our mind is powerful and it can lead us into overwhelm and it can also lead us into ease even with the same situation, even in the same situation. And I'm going to admit that I eventually have gotten to a place somewhat of ease in all this. And I do have the the benefit maybe, is that's a weird way to put it, of I've been in this for just a couple days longer than maybe some people. My son actually got sick, which it ended up not being the coronavirus last week. 
And so we we stayed home. We stayed home sort of a week before school closed. Um, and so now as I'm recording this, it's it's week two and we're sort of at the next level of what it means to be stuck home. So the thing that I think is really important to note is that the scared and stressed out mind leads us to take actions that reflect that mind, right? And those actions are usually... They make us unproductive, we're short-tempered, they can even make us sick. I mean, the list can go on, but these are some of the ones that might resonate with you right now. And we cannot control what is happening out in the world. And this circumstance is really showing us how little we can control. Very often, it's harder to decipher that, like it's harder for us to believe what we can't control. And so often goals come into people's planners that I'm like, but is that even your goal? Just like about kids, about work. And we always have to sort of reword them. And now I just think it's so obvious (laughs) that we, what we can't control. But I'm not sure it's as obvious that we can control what we think about it because we are being fed so much. So this video is five tools and a couple associated ideas that I'm hoping will help you. And all these ideas are meant to be plugged into your days and to learn how to really plan for days during this time. That was the first video. So tool number one is Brooke Castillo's model. So I have been a student of Brooke Castillo for a while now. I love listening to her talk. I love doing, I don't love always doing the work because the work is sometimes hard, Um, but her model has really changed the way that I approach everything and how I feel on a daily basis. And she has 300 podcast episodes on her model. So I'm just gonna give you an overview. I'm gonna give you like, I'm going to show you the menu and then you can go dive in and learn more. And something really cool she's done right now is she's actually recording daily podcasts on this time. Um, So she's talking through a lot of the thoughts that are coming up for people. And so you can see how they plug into her model and you can go get lost in her 300 episodes if you have extra time, which we seem to have right now. So I just want to give you the, the overview so that you can use it in its its most base format, and then you can go learn more. Okay, so here's the model. The model is that our circumstances lead to our thoughts, which lead to our feelings, which leads to our actions, which leads to our results, okay? So a circumstance is that school is canceled. A circumstance is that we're working from home, A circumstance could be that a virus is going around and X amount of people, depending on when you listen to this, have gotten sick or X amount of people have died. Um, And all of those are circumstances. If we were to say there's a a horrible virus, that's a thought because you could have a different thought that um, there's a virus that's saving the planet. I don't know. There's many thoughts you could have. So the facts are boring. There's no emotion in them. And very often I find that we think of our thoughts as circumstances. And that's where I think right now is an opportunity because the circumstances and the thoughts I find are easier to separate out right now. So again, those are circumstances. School is closed. Work is canceled. I'm home with my kids. Um, the vi- uh, there's a virus, um, I could get sick is a thought, like that's not a circumstance. So let's go over what some thoughts might look like. I won't be able to get any work done with my husband and kids home. Um, it's hard to homeschool. It's a lot of work to homeschool. It's a lot of, it's a lot of work to homeschool might seem to some like it's a circumstance, but that's actually a thought you're having about it. The house is going to be a mess with everyone in it. We won't have enough food. We might all die, right? The thoughts can get pretty morbid right now. So it's really important to figure out what to do with those thoughts. Fear is real. And I would say almost more contagious, at least right 
now at this today point more contagious than the coronavirus. It's being fed to us, like literally almost every second if we tap into it. And the choices we make do not have to come from a place of fear. And that's what's so cool about Brooke's model. So go back and look at the part of this video where I say it, show you the model and I talk to that. And just start to practice upgrading your models and see how when you change your thought, you can actually impact your feelings, which then impact your actions, even though the circumstance is not changing. It's a really cool thing to see in action. So what I would do is I would take out a piece of paper and I would write down this model and, you know, write it small at the top. And then I would literally write the letter C-T-F-A-R and I would go through and I would write some of the circumstances that you're dealing right now and some of the thoughts that you're feeling about thinking about that circumstance and then how those are making you feel and you'll be able to start to like you can fill in different places if you're yelling all the time maybe you put that in the action and you're looking at the feeling that's causing you to yell and then you're mapping that back to the thought like you can sort of feel it's like a puzzle you can fill it in but the cool thing is is that you can't change the circumstance but you can go in and you can start to tweak the thoughts and you can start to tweak them in a way that makes you do things slightly differently. And that becomes a way to really change how you're getting through your day. And so I highly, highly recommend making time for this. Okay, so tool number two, I'm going to get into some of this a little more because I have a slightly different way to do it, but that's the model at its core, tool number one. And again, I will give you the resources to go learn more because I think it's very worthwhile. Tool number two is to write your mind. So our heads jumble things up. Our heads make things harder, more complicated, more difficult. And when we can get them onto paper, we can see where it really is. And I actually feel like if everyone had have made shopping lists about what they really needed, we might not have had that like toilet paper frenzy. All you have to do is look at how much toilet paper you really use. And we just get into fear and coming from a place of fear is in our head. And when we get it out on paper and we can see it, sometimes that itself starts to peel away some of the fear. So a few ways that you could write what you think is you could just keep an old-fashioned journal. I love The Artist's Way, the book by Julia Cameron, and one thing she recommends is just writing three pages every morning about what's on your mind. I couldn't think of a better time in the world to start this, a better time in your life to start this is right now. Um, and if you can't remember what to say, just write, I can't remember what to say, but just commit to those three pages every morning. Wake up a little early and do that and see how it starts to shift you. You could plan your days on paper, which is the resource I gave you in video one. That is writing things down. That's creating order out of the chaos in your head. Because the instinct right now is to just treat every day like a weekend, sleep in, watch movies. But in the end of the day, that doesn't hold us and that doesn't help us with the fear and the mindset of being right now. You could start to turn around your thoughts on paper, like what I just showed you in tool one, which is way easier than doing it in your head. So in case the the model sounds a little confusing and it is something that you have to practice. I've been practicing it now for over a year. I do it on a daily basis and it's changed a lot, but it's taken practice. It's taken learning. Um, I pay to get more training on it. So it's something that I do very regularly. Um, but I wanted to make something that was particular to right now and might help you um, in a different way. So what I want you to do is I want you to do an exercise and I want you to get all the thoughts about the coronavirus, about this time right now on a piece of paper. And then in, the, in a second column, so if you go download our sheet, you can see the second column. I want you to just say yes or no. Is this thought serving you? And then on the next column, I want you to look at what's a different idea you can play with instead. Like what's a different thing that you could try on and see how that feels. 
So this is what the paper looks like. You just do your thought download in that right hand column. And let me give you a couple examples. You might be having a thought of like, I don't want my kids to get sick. I don't want anything to ever happen to my kids, right? So maybe you have that thought and that's something you're thinking on a very regular basis. Imagine what that makes you do in a day, by the way. So is this thought serving me? No, it's making me worried. It's making me grumpy. And it's probably not even making me show up in the most loving way to my kids, which is so weird because the thought seems like it would be loving, right? So what could I try on instead? I could try on instead like, oh, it seems like maybe my kids will get sick, but cool. Like it seems also that kids aren't, you know, kids are okay in all this. And so, but maybe we should wash our hands really well. Maybe we should come up with a plan for if somebody gets sick. We'll put everyone in their beds. We'll wait, but the girls share a room. So maybe this room will be the room that somebody goes into if, if only one person's sick. Maybe we'll bring everybody meals in bed. Uh, we'll make sure the sink's always empty, right? Maybe we should get some better supplements just to um, up our immune system, okay? So see how that thought is so different when I realize it's not serving me and I start to try on different things. Okay, so maybe, as here's another example, as I delete all the events on my calendar, I start to feel really disappointed for all the things I've worked hard for that aren't happening. And actually, you know, I had to cancel an event that I, a retreat that I having or supposed to have had in New Orleans in June. And though a lot of this might be cleared by then, I just didn't want to make people in my audience plan for anything right now, right? Like, Maybe that was dumb because I hear you can get cheap tickets, but I just don't feel like that's the that's what we're supposed to be doing right now. So I canceled it and we'll do it again soon. I'm super excited, but it was a bummer. It was something I'd thought about for a long time. I'd promise people I do not like breaking my promises and I, I was really looking forward to it. And even worse than that has been a lot of the things that have been canceled for my kids. It's hard to see that happen. Like, They've looked forward for things for years because schools are good that way. They have things for them to look forward to. And those things are getting canceled. And so I think about that. And the thing is, is that, yes, it's okay to have a moment of sadness. I actually think it's great to have a good try. But if I keep thinking about those things, is that serving me? Is that helping me do what I can do today? No. And so... As I delete the events on my calendar, I start to think about, well, what if I can look at the open space? Or what if I can look at the opportunity to do something a little different in that same realm, right? So as I start to see the space, for example, I start to think of all the things I've wanted to do. And if you guys have been following me, you know I have a goal to read 100 books this year. But it's been really busy this winter so far. And I haven't, you know, I've read I've read more books than I usually read. Like the 100 books definitely kick my butt. But I'm not really on target to finish 100 books. But now, guess what? I have a lot of time for reading. And maybe I'll get closer to my goal. Um, back in January, I bought an art journaling class that I'm so excited to do. In the back of my head, I thought I'd do it with my girls. I bought the supplies for us, thank goodness. And we just haven't sat down to do it. We did a page. We had a lot of fun, but then we just didn't get into it. We didn't get into the habit of it. And guess what? When homeschooling didn't kick in, when there was no distance learning for two of my kids and the, you know, our other school hadn't kicked in yet, what did we think to do? The art journaling class, because we really needed some structure in our day. And there was that class and it was nurturing and fun and great. And we're, it's what we go to each day when we need, you know, when we're not sure what to do and we're creating and that feels really good. And I didn't get there until I stopped having the pity party about all the things canceled. I couldn't see the solutions. So those were the examples <laughs> that this screen was made for, but that's okay. So here's the action I want you to take. I want you to tend to your mindset daily. I want you to get super honest about your thoughts just for like five to 10 minutes. I feel like the honesty part can be quick. It should be real. A great time to do it is first thing in the morning because we tend to like wake up and have that, like be able to think those things. And a lot of times we're anxious, especially in these times, first thing in the morning as we head into this sort of uncertain day. And then spend 20 minutes 
to really search for better thoughts and try them on and see what they feel like if the thoughts don't serve you. Now, something interesting that's happened to me after a week is that I'm starting to actually have thoughts that serve me and I can say yes. And that feels so good because I'm starting to see the space. I'm starting to see what happens that I'm reading. I'm starting to have gratitude for home. And then other things come up like, we all had Zoom calls at the same time today and that didn't work so well. And, you know, so then I have those kinds of thoughts. So things can happen, but but you'll start to have good thoughts and you'll be able to say yes, and that feels good too. So just take the time to tend to it, right? Just because, a, think of it as a garden and there might be a section of the garden that's growing tons of weeds and so you spend time weeding it and then there's also a section of the garden where all the herbs are growing beautifully but there's things that you have to do there like you have to like pick off the flowers and so it doesn't have to be all bad things that end up on your list but it might start off that way and that's totally okay. All right, the other only other thing I want to say about this is Very often when we start to see this kind of content and get these tools and learn that there's another way or get reminded that there's another way, we want to tell everybody. But I highly recommend that if you're a woman, a mother, a team leader, and you're seeing this, start with your mindset. And then after you do that, see what conversations you need to have with kids, with loved ones, with community, with your team, with all the people, but really do this work yourself first because then you'll be able to pass it on at a different capacity. Okay, tool number three, plan for the news. This is an important one and I really want you to do it. So even if you never ever print out those planning sheets, you can do this in your digital Google Calendar. I want you to put in the time that you're going to look at the news. I want you to make a choice about that. Now, you might be like, you want me to use watch the news? No, I don't want you to watch the news. But I feel like consistent news, we all know, is is like right now is very negative. It's scary. It is fear based. It is also there's a lot of facts, but within the facts are also opinions and thoughts. And the facts are so drastic that they're very easy for us to have thoughts about. So it's not it's very hard to just see the circumstances in news. So if you need to always if you need to feel like you're always in the know, choose a time, choose a time that you're going to digest the news. Put it in your calendar, okay? Again, consistent news does not help mindset. So decide when and what you want to take in. And I'm not only talking about CNN, TV, radio. I'm talking about the internet. I'm talking about what happens when you open your inbox. I'm talking about social media. All of this right now is news. It's a constant flow and it does not necessarily help your mindset. So choose that half an hour that you're going to check in. Choose a half an hour then to digest it with your spouse or a friend whose judgment you trust. Really plan for the news. Another thing you could do is plan for the news and then go on your walk and take in nature or plan for the news and then listen to one of these videos or Brooke Castillo's podcast and really balance the news with something good, with good messaging. There is a lot of good messaging out there right now. There's a lot of people rallying to get us good information. So balance the news. It's almost like a lot of times when people are trying to, like talking about hydration and health and they're talking about like their afternoon glass of wine. I used to always say, well, just if you have a glass of wine, have a glass of water. So it's the same thing. It's like if you're doing the negative thing, then balance it out with something that's going to help your wellness. The news is not helping your wellness. Now, it's important that all this is choice because you could choose not to watch the news. Okay, but in this time, that's highly unlikely. So just plan for it. If your kids have access to news, make sure you're having this conversation with them for sure. Help them filter what they're seeing and help them turn around their thoughts too. This is really important right now. So here's how you take action. Just make news part of your plan. Put it in your calendar, whatever that is. Put it in your planning sheet if you watch video one and you're into that method. And then try to stick to your boundaries. That part 
might be a practice. It might not be the easiest thing. We are literally being inundated. Sometimes the news is coming in our texts. And so, and always try to balance the news with mindset growth. So if you're having trouble holding the boundary of the time that you put in your calendar to consume news, then at least be conscious of when you're consuming it so that maybe on the other end of the day, you can balance it. Now, another thing I would say about time of news is like I'm liking checking in in the midday because that gives me the morning to really focus on my work, on the kids, on the things that I've chosen to show up. Then I can check in with the world and I have time to digest it before I go to sleep because as we get into food and wellness, which we will get into, sleep is really important right now and we don't want the news to get in the way of our sleep. Okay, tool number four, rhythm. Structure helps foster a positive mindset. This is always true. But right now, I think it's particularly true. And I want you to think of rhythm kind of like an accordion. And I referred to this a little bit in video one because a lot of time was coming up in my planning sheets. And the reason that time still exists in my planning sheets is because I know there's things that everyone has to show up to. To be quite honest, if we were just like in 100% quarantine and didn't have to show up for meetings, which isn't going to happen, I would take that time off right now. Because I really think it's important to get to a flexible state, at least in some parts of the day, where we really are in rhythm. And here's why I like rhythm. It's kind of like an accordion. We can grow it and we can subtract it. So let's use like dinner as an example. So dinner is a really helpful habit right now because it's connecting us as families. We're able to digest some of the news we might be hearing. We're able to reflect back on our day, plan for the day tomorrow, eat really healthy food, have gratitude for where we are. Like such a good habit. I highly recommend it right now. But and we might be like trying to finish our day, our work boundaries might not be as good. Our, you know, kids, my kid had a lesson the other day late on Skype because the teacher's trying to like move stuff around. So we might not always understand time wise how things are going to happen, but I can contract the rhythm to still have dinner and just make a quicker dinner and I can expand it. Um, and so right now is actually an opportunity to expand some things that we usually rush through. But I really want you to be conscious of this idea of rhythm and that things can expand and contract in time and it's less worrisome how long they take and more that they happen in a certain order because it will really help you stack some of the habits that we're going to talk about if you're thinking of it in a very rhythmic way. So here are some ideas around rhythm. So there's many mealtime rituals that have a rhythm. So, you know, you're, you, you're making dinner, you're sitting down and having a moment of silence, you're having certain conversations, you're set, you know, you're setting the table before dinner, you're cleaning up after. There's all these things that are built in and can be part of a mealtime ritual. Meditation is a great thing to build in into your rhythm. Walks, exercise, quiet, um, self-care rituals, right? These can be so rhythmic. If you put like, I'm going to brush my teeth and take a shower from 6.30 to 7, and then I'm going to go exercise from 7 to 7.30, there's some moments in time where we might need to be that um, uh, rigid, I guess. But rhythm is much more helpful and much more supportive. And so if we just group all those things together and say we're going to wake up at six and know that we want to be done by X amount of time and we really pay attention to our rhythm in that, that can just ground us. And that's grounding is really helpful right now. Sleep rituals can be very rhythmic. Art is such a great thing to tap into rhythm. Music, family time. So I just want to point out that everything on this page are things that we don't normally have time for when we're really busy. And one of the things that we have right now is a lot of time. And these things help us tap into rhythm. They help us tap into our natural rhythm, which is what we're doing when I talk about rhythm. We're, we're tapping into how our bodies are wanting to be in time and space. We're resting when we're tired instead of grabbing a cup of coffee, right? We're 
um, doing work when we're inspired because we're inspired. We're sitting down to get creative or to breathe in the middle of hectic. And so all of these things help us tap into our natural rhythms. And it's such a good opportunity to do that right now. And it hugely affects our mind and how our our heart shows up in this time. It affects our mindset. So some of these might be fun to play with. So design a rhythm. What you could do to do this is just what I was talking about with the dinner. Just group a series of micro habits and attach them to a non-negotiable practice. So what I mean by this is let's say that you really want fresh air and you want to get into a habit of deep breath. So maybe you know that you wash the dishes every day. So you tie in breathing to washing the dishes. Maybe you know that every morning you um, wake up and have breakfast. And so maybe you decide to walk outside before you have breakfast, right? So you're attaching it to things you already know that you're going to do and that you're excited about. Sometimes these things belong before because maybe they're harder to motivate for yourself. I would put those things before something that you already do. And if they feel like a reward, you could do them after, but you could group them together. And a lot of times these things, the reason they don't end up in in our calendars and the reason that we don't make time for them is because they may only take 10 minutes. And so we don't think we need to, but then we get so busy and there's no time. And so right now, while there is time, we can group them and be really intentional about putting them in our lives. And it might be that we're in this moment for long enough that these things could become a habit. And then when we're back to the hustle and bustle of life, which we will be at some point, we might bring some of these rhythms and habits, these natural rhythms and habits back into our you know, very planned, orchestrated life that gets busy and we forget this rhythm. We forget our natural rhythm and maybe we'll remember it more now. Okay, tool number five is the possibilities list. And this ties back into video one because the planning sheet for the week is all about possibilities. So, Information from the outside, meaning like that media that we're going to limit a little bit and our neighbors talking about what's happening and our friends talking about what's happening and all the stuff is often very focused on limitations because that's just what we're fed for some reason or what we grab onto. So the information from our hearts, from our grounded selves, from our higher power, however you want to think about it, is possibilities based. That little voice in your head, that little voice, the nice one, not the mean one, but the nice voice in your head is possibilities based and it's constantly feeding you great ideas and what your body needs. But we are so busy that we often don't listen or can't hear. So sometimes we just need to pivot the to the possibilities. Like we just need to stay positive and pivot. So I want you to think about what are the things you could do over the next few weeks or months, right? So what are the things like not what do you want to do what are you feeling limited by it's like what are the things what are the possibilities that you could do over the next few weeks and months even though even though it's not quite how you want it to be right now even though there's a lot of limits like what are the possibilities what things will fill you up How can you listen to everyone's individual's needs in your household, not in the world? But how can you listen to what others want in your family right now? Which is very important, I think, that we're listening to ourselves and to everybody right now. So I really want you to fill your possibilities list. 
given the current circumstances, what are the possibilities? What are the opportunities right now? There are a lot of them if we choose to see them. So I highly recommend crowdsourcing this. I actually got to a place where I got so excited about the possibilities and then I went out and walked with my girls and they like amplified it like times a hundred and they were like well what about this and what about this and what about this they had so many great ideas and I'll share some of them with you at the end of this video so I highly recommend talking to your family about what the possibilities are right now and or friends if it's work or colleagues if it's work right so really think about the different areas there might be different people who can give you different sets of possibilities based on these categories so I want you to consider self-care and wellness possibilities because these are going to be really important in the weeks ahead. I want you to consider learning possibilities for you and your kiddos. My art class has like literally changed my days. What are the food possibilities? And that might look different as we're in different stages of this. What are the home possibilities? Like me, my husband and I looked at each other the other day and we're like, maybe we'll have a chance to like clean out the basement, right? When have we ever had time for that? We have to do work, but like work we can get efficient at. And then we're going to have these weekends where we're home and we're not running around and maybe we can get to those things. What are the work possibilities? So there's a lot of limitations or there's feeling like there's a lot of limitations with work, but what are the possibilities? How might this better what I'm working on right now? What are the family possibilities? What are the connecting possibilities? The biggest thing I'm seeing right now is watching people connect who've never connected before. So what are the connections? How do we foster the connections of the people who we're not seeing in person? How are we connecting with people we wouldn't have considered connecting with two weeks ago? Like what are the possibilities in that? Especially around work, I would say. Look, look at that. Look at what, how you can connect to people in your work in a different way now that we're working virtually. And then I had to add the category of what are the board possibilities because I've walked by grown adults who are like, you know, on day two, like we're so bored. I've had my kids walk in and say we're so bored. And I just think boredom is the root of the most creative, most genius moments in all of history. So this is a good thing. So as you get bored, tap into what are the possibilities. So I made you a list with all these categories. Again, all these planning sheets are downloadable um, at plansimple.com or below if you're watching this video there, below the videos are the links to download them. So I made these for you so it's super easy. It's like the school worksheets our kids are getting. We can just fill these out and make our plans. Okay. So I want to acknowledge, and I sort of started to talk about this in video one, but making lists taps into our creative right brain side, right? This is good. Where putting things into time is more of our logical left brain. And I believe that to create the feeling of freedom, which many of us I think are feeling is being um, tested right now, I believe we need both. So I want to make sure that as I'm saying, now is the time to plan, that you're not only just planning your days with all the things that are coming from the outside, what work is telling you to do, what your children's school is telling you to do, but you're really doing this work of possibilities to tap into that creative part of your brain that is going to activate this time in a way that those people don't know how to activate. Everyone's confused right now. You are the one who knows how to thrive through this moment. And so you really need to utilize these tools this, and, and be able to tap into the possibilities, okay? I really believe that's the root of feeling freedom right now, which is a feeling. It is not a reality. The end of the virus does not mean you'll feel free. But you have the ability to really understand what it means to feel free in the midst of all this. And I can promise you when we get out of this, you will be on fire. Okay, here's some samples of possibilities that came out of my family. Oh, I have to read those from a sheet. So some of the things that came up when we went through this ourselves 
are, well, let me start with mine. So I knew that I really needed to be able to get outside. That's what I came up with. I really wanted to clean out a few closets. I knew that I really wanted the possibility of finding time alone. I I really quickly understood that all this time would allow me to connect with my kids in a different way. Um, and here are some of the things that came up when we put our heads together. We could learn how to cook new things. We could take this art journaling class that we've really been wanting to take. We could come up with a really fun exercise at home routine. And I was thinking, wow, that's a great idea because I've been wanting to do that forever. And I'm totally slave to going to yoga classes in the gym. But what if I could do it from home every once in a while and be more consistent? Nature walks with the family, which have been something we've been missing. I can read and make that, you know, 100 book um, goal come even closer. My daughter thought of the idea of a book club. I was like, oh, great. You can have a book club with your friends. They said, no, we can have a book club with our family. So it's funny how all these ideas can come up. Um, You can work on communication as a family. You can take really good care of your body. Other people can practice taking really good care of their bodies. Um, Everyone can get involved in house tasks. That came from my husband and I, clearly not the kids. Um, We can learn how to do work better. We can learn how to be more creative. We can learn how to be more efficient. I was like, you know what? This is such a good opportunity to be a better wife. We can practice disease prevention, which we practiced last week. It was amazing. I don't think I will ever even look at like the vomit bug the same way. We have all these things that we can now do to prevent other people in our house from getting sick. You can practice caring for someone who's sick. Um, You can learn a whole slew of things. So one of my kids is, um, you know, we're doing this very abstract art journaling class. One of my sons is learning how to draw super realistic He's just at his desk drawing eyes. He's learning how to exercise with his team online and connect with people that way. I mean, so many possibilities. All right. I want to hear yours at some point. So do be in touch. You can go to plansimple.com and look at the bar at the top. Um, I'm going to be offering classes and community events over the coming weeks. I want to be able to gather um, and really be supportive and answer questions and really crowdsource what's happening um, and be a supportive place. And I also have a lot of thoughts about planning. So I will also do some of these classes live and be able to answer questions. Um, and from there also, I'll, there'll be links to connect. So I told you all that because I really, I want to hear what some of your possibilities are. I'm super curious. So make sure to tell us.